maintain a Google email group and a meetup group as well. Very little traffic. Recommend that everyone subscribe to either one of those. It takes only a few seconds <laughs> till you send the blank email and you will get one or two uh, emails per week on the upcoming programs. Uh, very, uh, no other traffic. Uh, instructions, please. Everyone, right now, put a red X on your microphone if you're attending by Zoom. And I must ask those in attendance in the restaurant in person to please contain their conversations at least during the presentation period. Now, tonight we'll have two rounds, one round in which we'll give everybody an opportunity, five to ten minutes, to talk about the municipal election, and then we'll begin again the second round, which you can have rebuttals, remarks uh, about presentations or things you've heard. So there'll be two segments to the evening tonight. Uh, now, although I am not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for our upcoming programs. In April, we will begin a special series of Earth Day speakers, beginning on April the 1st with Nuke Watch, an organization that's been around um, about 40 some years actually regarding nuclear technology and nuclear weaponry. A very responsible organization, which has not made a presentation before. Yo, what's up, We're guys? excited about coming. Please I'm back. yourself. All right, get rid of Big Pecker again. <laughs> Yo, I'm back. Don't kick me, please. I mean Dan, business. Tim, thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, April the 1st. On April the 8th, we have another open mic, but we're featuring three speakers from the uh, Illinois people that are um, uh, bringing about climate change, they want passage of the Earth Bill. So we have three keynote speakers, and we're asking everyone to what do you think about what we do we need to do to stop climate change? What must be done in your mind to stop global warming catastrophe? Should be a good evening. On April the 15th, our own Dan Weinberg is here. It's going to give us another presentation, well researched. It's a librarian by profession on capitalism and soil. What is capitalism, corporate farming doing these days? An update on that. And there's a fascinating topic called regenerative agriculture, which, if you're not familiar with, I'd recommend attending. On April the 22nd, yours truly, Charles Paydock will present a rather detailed eco plan for the use of a car in Chicago and the country. I have not seen this plan uh, proposed anywhere in the transportation community. And you learn a lot about transportation, uh, getting around the city in Chicago and what tra the park transportation plays in our lives infrastructure details, things you may not have known. That's April the 22nd. April the 29th is presently open. We may be making arrangements. We may have a visitor, J.J. Jamison, a former participant at the College of Complexes, 
uh, that's gotten out of jail on parole. And we're making arrangements. We'll see if we can have him speak and welcome back and tell us what he's been up to. Okay, on May the 6th, it's presently open. I'm looking for May Day speakers on the condition of labor or socioeconomics. Uh, you guys are welcome. I may try to put together, by the way, a series of speakers on the topic of socioeconomics. On May the 13th, we're having a guest speaker from the other college, our satellite campus, Marilyn. Well, I've heard this presentation is an excellent presentation. She talks about economic democracy and how there are three, three institutions that are producing inequality. And it's a very good talk, well thought out uh, presentation. And last, finally, I'd like to point out that we have two archival pages. We have one with our lectures, our lecture library uh, that Tim has posted. Uh, uh, the lecture library, and we also maintain a list of uh, PowerPoint presentation and other recommended films, all free on the internet, uh, that uh, have been suggested by speakers or other attendees of the College of Complex. As you can see, I just posted, recommend a series of episodes concerning the universe and cosmology, a topic which I have some interest in, and hopefully these will be of interest to you. Okay, Tim, thank you very much. Uh, take it away. All right, Charlie. Uh, you, you're. Um, go ahead, David. Now, how are you going to format this? Just uh, some general rules on the elections, or do you want to start with our formal presentation? First of all, are there any other announcements of neighborhood or community? All right. Here we go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just, just who's watching? Okay, he's going to oh, get up to the mic. Why don't you stabilize yourself, David? In the uh, interest of tonight's topic, uh, I know the next Libertarian chapter meeting on Tuesday, April 4th, also runoff election night. We will be viewing the returns of Piggery Restaurant in the Irving Park and Asim Avenue. You know, join us that evening. Some of you might otherwise be busy. Try to think of other stuff to do that night, but I think this mayoral election will be pretty dramatic fodder for the whole evening. Okay, David. Thanks, David. Didn't even bustle yet. All Thanks. right. Any other announcements of neighborhood or community interest? All right, and we're going to go on the just a nice program. We're going to have an open microphone uh, regarding the uh, upcoming election. Um, keynote, keynote speakers. All right. Charlie, take it away. All right. Uh I don't see Ernie, so Raj, are you ready to go? Raj, Raj is not there, Charlie. Do I get to turn it back too? But where did they go? Why did they dis why did they disappear? Raj is not here right now. He's not logged in. I know. What happened? And Ernie's there. He's ready to go, but uh, yeah, Raj. but he's not there either. Well, um, Life is what you make. Okay, Thanks. now Here's let's. Uh, all right, Ernie, you want to start with your presentation about the mayor? Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Ernie. All right, yeah, I uh, basically, uh, I, I can't say that I've prepared a very formal, organized presentation, but I definitely have some thoughts on our municipal elections, which I'm willing to set forth and let people kind of shoot arrows at me if they want to. Uh, for me, there's two elections. Uh, for some of you, there's two, and for some, there's only one. For me, there's two, the mayoral, of course, and then the aldermanic. For the aldermanic elections, uh, where there were more three or more candidates, of course, there's a runoff, and that's the case where I live in the 43rd Ward. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that first. It's of least importance to everybody else. Actually, it is of some importance to everybody else. I have learned some things. Uh, we had six candidates originally, and I got to know them well. I held a little uh, a forum myself for these six candidates, 
was supposedly on senior issues at a nearby church and all six came unfortunately we didn't have as good attendance as we should have among the senior community but it was a good seminar and i did get to know these people and i found something out that i should have known sooner but uh it didn't it wasn't quite clear to me the 43rd ward is essentially a republican ward now all six of these candidates or at least five of them were Republican they they none of them of course call themselves Republican they call themselves Democrats or independents uh but effectively they're Republicans based on the positions that they take and I the 43rd Ward turns out to be a little bit of Texas right here in Chicago in in my opinion and we shouldn't be surprised this is where the money is it's the wealthiest ward in the city goes from diversity down along the lake almost to downtown and uh, you know who lives there people with uh, a little bit of uh, extra money uh and all of the candidates my my main litmus test was to ask the candidates about bring chicago hope uh many of you are familiar with that but just briefly what it is is a an initiative that would add a 1.9 percent additional transfer tax to the sale of properties over a million dollars all right this would bring in approximately 160 million dollars in revenue according to the present structure of the initiative that money would be earmarked specifically for affordable affordable housing uh, none of the six candidates that were running for alderman here supported that at all okay and why might this be imp of, of importance uh to people outside the 43rd ward well there are 50 aldermen and of course, 43rd Ward only provides one, but we need to understand that that even though most of the people who attend this group are, are toward the progressive side and probably live in progressive wards and have progressive aldermen, uh, that's not the case everywhere. And it should be of interest to all of us who the other 49 aldermen are and, and what they think. Um, so anyway, we're, we're having one more such meeting on Monday at one of the CHA buildings at 1845 North Larrabee. Uh, Joan Hollingsworth is, is hosting a meeting and actually only one of the candidates will be able to be there as it looks, looks like now. The two candidates we have, we have Timmy Knutson, who was appointed by Mayor Lightfoot uh, when Michelle Smith stepped down. And then there's another gentleman by the name of Brian Comer, who's lived in the ward all his life. He's president of what's the Sheffield Neighbors, which is a neighborhood association there. And uh, those two are battling it out for the uh, for the seat. Now, Timmy is just getting all the endorsements. He's gotten endorsements from everyone but God. OK, and uh, uh, um, Go Comer got an endorsement from the Tribune. And he may, may be in some ways the most acceptable, but the Tribune endorsement is not exactly a progressive in, endorsement. So uh, that's where we're at. I'm, I'm, I, I haven't decided. I literally have not decided who I'm going to vote for. And I won't tell anybody when I do because I'm wanting to keep or, yeah. impartiality because of the, the, the meetings that I've set up and so forth. Regarding the mayor's election, um regarding um uh, paul vallis versus brandon johnson i'm also up in the air on that i was initially leaning toward paul vallis uh because i think that he has the most experience and he well I, he's far from a perfect candidate in my opinion but he has the most experience in running large governmental organizations and uh, and I don't particularly like Brandon Johnson's idea of cutting the police budget. I think that the police department has a lot of problems, but I don't think cutting the budget and cutting the number of officers is going to solve it. I think we need to solve it with, with training and education and who knows, a lot of other things. Um, okay, so I, I was leaning toward Vallis and then I found out that he's getting a lot of donations from the people at Citadel. I don't know if you all remember Citadel. Citadel is the is the hedge fund that was started by Ken Griffin, who for a while was the richest man in Illinois until he picked up stakes and went to Florida because I guess he figures he's going to pay less taxes down there. And a very right-wing kind of thing. He's the guy who put up the money that defeated 
the fair tax, the graduated income tax, which to me is, you know, I don't see how you can reasonably be uh, with a straight face against the graduated income tax, you know, unless you're a billionaire. I'm you're back. Big Tiger, that guy the kid. Oh, really? What else have you got to do on a Saturday right. night? You know, bad. Where's your girlfriends? Where's your boyfriend? You've got no one to do on a Saturday night. Okay. Where is the list of them? Are we okay now? Uh, temporarily, but I'm watching the computer for Tim. I don't usually do this. Yeah, I'm yeah, I don't see where Tim is. There. Anyway, let's assume he's there. Okay, so uh, yeah, I don't think can can uh, oppose the graduate income tax unless they're they're uh, they're wealthy and they're willing to admit that they'd rather pay less taxes themselves and have middle class and lower middle class people pay more taxes. Anyway, that's uh, that's Citadel and and um. Uh, uh, Vallis, Paul Vallis has been getting money from those people. Now, I know it's, it's, it's probably hard for political candidates to turn down money, although, although he has turned down money from the FOP. Well, Vallis is not accepting money from the FOP. Uh, I wish he would turn down some of that, some of that, uh, big, uh, you know, fat cat money, but he, he hasn't. Um, I don't think that he he's 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 a, a brilliant candidate for mayor. He may have some of the same problem which Lori Lightfoot had. Uh, many insiders that I talked to say Lori Lightfoot was just terrible to get along with. They didn't like her at all. That's why so many city council people all resigned at once. So we may have a little bit of the same thing with Vallis. Yeah. Now, as far as Brandon Johnson, uh, I like his policies. He wants a city graduated income tax, and he supports bring Chicago home. But uh, so I like those policies. I don't like oh, it. I like it. I'm on high. Okay. Anyway, hey, uh, whoever at the uh, controls there in the restaurant, kick whoever out, please. Yeah. Anyway, let I'll just try and talk loudly, and hopefully I can I can out shout Big Pecker and all the rest of them. Um, anyway, uh, so I'm I haven't I literally haven't decided yet. I I think I. I'm I'm bummed out because I don't think we have a really great candidate for mayor, and I was much more excited about Lori Lightfoot four years ago, uh, and she did some good things and not such good things, but but at least she seemed to be uh, independent and on the right track. Uh, all right, guys, I gotta go. All right. Anyway, uh, that's basically where I stand now. I haven't decided, and I want to hear what input people have on this whole process and I'll, I'll i'll talk some more later in answer to what you guys say thank you very much for listening okay who's up I think, uh, I think uh uh roger i think i'm up can i talk up? who's up Raj. all right roger. Big pecker's up. please get rid of anyone who does not have a red x on there i'm not ready yet all right, I'll go then. No, let I have me problem go. with my video. Okay, go ahead, Charlie. All right, uh, I really don't follow city municipal affairs assiduously, but Charlie, I can keep trying to look at the uh, candidacy, the websites, and hopefully I can apply some objective criteria. Um, first of all, Ernie, uh, the real estate transfer tax, by the way, was came about, was given, assigned to be used for public transit. That oh. was compromised in 2008. Virtually every real estate transaction these days is going to be over a million dollars. But that money has already been designated to be used specifically and entirely for public transit. And they have budgeted for it for several years to come. So I really doubt there's gonna be any change in that whatsoever because it would disrupt it entirely the budgets of the three transfer uh, public transit agencies in the municipality. All right, getting back to it, I have not Follow municipal affairs, 
I generally focus on congressional matters and on occasional on state. I looked over the thing, I have to concur with Ernie. I'm a retired civil service employee. And I served as as, uh, as a, uh, running public agencies, public libraries uh, for a number of years, for 10 years. So, I, and, and dealt with city managers. I must, sorry to say that the one candidate has not spent even one day employed in in government uh, nor has he distinguished himself outside of government in any particular fashion in two ways um the one guy pretends to be a union official yet my own credentials as the union official far exceed his and um he so he has good ideas. We all have good ideas. I'm, I've got loads of good ideas. Um, I imagine his, his sentiments is, are in the right place and in the heart. However, you're looking over a resume. What credentials do you have? Now, the other individual apparently has had a significant, I was thinking as board of, uh, superintendent of schools is one of the principal agencies in any city. That's one of the top three that's got to be up there. And you have to put together budget, deal with law, rule, and regulation. Uh, not only has he served in one city, but he served in multiple cities. Obviously, he was hired in other, other locations for having done a commendable job. And to me, that carries the weight. Um, it's called years of credible service in the government. How many years of credible service do you have? And that's what they use as the basis of merit staffing. I dealt with very merit, that's another thing. I approach it from a merit staffing situation. If I was hiring within the government, who would I hire? And you award points and systems as various methods of doing this from a personalist, a human resource perspective. And I'm sorry, I, as much as I look towards the other candidate, and I know he's cornered the sentiments of the left, which is fine. And they put together a pretty good campaign. They're out there and they're hustling. This is very good and should be done. It's, it's paid off. Apparently the race has gotten a little bit closer. Uh, however, when it comes down to it, uh, that doesn't make up a good campaign and, and, and adherence of followers doesn't make up for an administrative skills and responsibilities that you've accrued. That's what I mean. I've looked over even this, this positions as a union official and his activities outside the government. And I guess, uh, you know, and that, if that's the case, I think I'm, I'm a better qualified candidate for mayor than he is. And I, I don't want to sound appropriate, but uh, that's kind of was my assessment. Anyhow, uh, I'd like to hear what everyone else has got to say. I'm open-minded and I welcome my friends such as Raj to change my mind in this regard. We've had several exchanges by email during the course of this campaign and I'd like to hear what he has to say. Thank you very much. Okay, Raj, are you ready now? You gotta unmute, Raj. Okay, Raj, unmute. Okay, uh, okay, I'm ready. All right, Raj, go ahead and okay. we'll, uh, we'll uh, you, you got the floor. Okay, um, what Mr. Paydock said, uh, you know, it's a ridiculous. In the United States, we have president, governors, and several officers and mayors and every, everything who haven't had a no experience, who never work a day in a government. Okay, look at the history of what's going on. So anyway, that's it. Okay, then secondly, Mr. Pera has convinced me but over the years that you don't, cannot trust rich people because uh, they will never care for labor. They never care for workers or other people. They are into their own. And he has said again and again and again. And uh, <laughs> so that is the problem.
Vietnam, Mr. Pedak is one thing. Now he wants to support a rich man, okay, who doesn't have much history in terms of honesty, integrity, and he hasn't worked very, very well with employees and other people in his life. Everywhere he has gone, he has got created in trouble. Other thing, Mr. Paydock's favorite guy has been for the last several years, Bernie Sanders. And I uh, now suddenly, Mr. Paydock don't like Bernie Sanders supporting Brendan Johnson. Bernie Sanders coming here to support Brendan Johnson. So it means something to Mr. Paydock. Anyway, so as far as Mr. Paydock goes, I have learned in a business that if someone, when you know a person who hasn't done very well in his previous job, all the report where, where Mr. Uh, Wallace has done, and there has been complaint, 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 and people have been very unhappy. So I cannot support him, okay? The, the, the trust issue, if a man says he's a Democrat and then he flirts with a Republican, okay? And uh, he's a, he's a worrying he's a more rip, he likes rich people, he doesn't like that many poor people, you know, and uh, he's a technocrat and he's not a people person. We approved his service in uh, Chicago. In Hajim, he wasn't good with people. He was good in, he was good in a technical thing in of the business. He's a technologist. I do not need as a mayor, a technical person. I need a may, as a mayor, a people person who can understand people. We have had a problem that people not understanding average people on the street. Like a, like a daily, 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 oh, daily senior was there. And daily junior was good too with the people. You know, we everybody loved in Chicago. So daily, wow, you know, Raj, if you don't like daily, you leave the town. And uh, it is important to me in, under this situation where there's a divide between black and white community is so great that people do understand black. And people do understand what is the issue that is a problem because white people do not have that much problem as black people have and Latino people have. And I want mayor who understand them, okay? And uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I have to do this at late. Crime is you. Crime is a problem, it's a big problem. And that's a, one of the most important thing. I personally, I have seen in New York City, I have seen here, I have studied in other cities. Look, police did not solve a crime problem. It is not for police to solve, solve a crime problem. But police does it there, after crime happens, they come down, okay? Okay, we understand community, community policing and more police and all those things, they don't solve a problem. In New York City, lots of cities, time and again and again, they go, they go some good and then they fall back. They go some good and they fall back. And this has been going on for a, all my last 30, 40 years. Time goes up and down. Now in New York City, they have a problem at this time and it was okay. Okay, but it has nothing to say, it, 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 it has to do how people feel. And, and uh, if we do not, if you have people very unhappy, if you have people who are not, not enough educated people in a community, if we do not have people who understand what, how the things works and how their, their stake is, and their crime, and crime, and, and, and a drug problem is not going to go away, no matter what you anybody says. We haven't solved drug problem in a long, long time. As long as I can remember 50, 60 years, drug problem isn't going to go away. Crime, crime, other crime, the white crime of well, the mass murders, you know, that is committed, they are not able to solve it. It comes again and again. You cannot do certain things. Black community, the poor, uneducated people, as long as they are there, they are going to have a problem, okay? We are probably, they are going to look at the poor people to be there. Where there is poverty, throughout the world you go, there is a crime. This is absolutely true. And particularly when poor and rich people are so much different, there are going to be crime. And so you have to, you have to better, better the community and what happened. The, the Brendan Johnson 
look look at him when he talks when he talks about issues when he talks about people there, there is a spark there there you feel you feel listening to him okay and 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 uh, he's good at that okay and he had experience with union with the teachers union and look that job is not easy no matter what mr peirak says teachers union organizing and mr peirak is a lifelong a supporter of union he spent his entire life and and as long as i far as i can see at college complexes he was a union man and he supported union now i do not know why he says that union people are union leaders are not qualified or they are, they are not capable of they are and and you should in mind can brendan brendan johnson can better communicate with the average person in a city of chicago compared to varas and i think brendan johnson can do it can brendan johnson get along with other people i think he can do it better than varas i think brendan johnson will listen to the people who criticize him i think brendan johnson more likely to listen when he's go, go, going to put down and insult people and who were him and disagree with him no i don't think brendan johnson going to do that okay these are the important issues i want city to go on i like i i did not always agree with mayor daily okay but but i like okay now now mayor lightfoot made a huge big mistake you know those riots and every happen okay otherwise i liked her and then she had other problem she did not understand the, how to get along with people i think brendan johnson knows that okay working for teachers union and in a country and and a going for negotiation for the what is teacher salary and and whatever whatever that is it's not an easy job okay it's a, it's a, it's a lot it's a complicated job and it you require leadership and i think he has a leadership i'm um, other thing again a gay com i live in a gay community and when i had a business my customers proportionately a large number of customers were gay people and when we did not have a good leader in washington dc in other places i know how many gay people died of aids because and nobody cared and i know how many demonstrations were there in a near my store and i know and i i i think that is very very important to me that the person is caring is listening he listen this is a gay community and gay community is behind behind johnson and we do not trust the 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 wallas your sego supported gay marriage it just like he supported gay marriage say it supports gay marriage didn't do much and he has been friendly to gay community and it is important to me minority communities in a country is important to me because black people have a money they are well to do they are well educated they 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 have resources they have connections and uh, the this situation is not always there in a black and latin community and it is important that we fix when we uplift the black and latin community if you cannot do that you have problem 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 unless you solve that problem city of chicago cannot get a world class city because it is important we saw all, all we pull all our citizen otherwise your crimes will be there your cars will be stolen or drugs will be coming and latino speaking at different language and different culture and that's not going to work for us the white people alone cannot run this city because white people do not need to run do not get to all the services required in a in a, in a city they do not they are not going not as many people white going to have their phone bill not paid or their electricity bill is three months and not paid this city, unless black people are well educated we have to educate them uh, i personally believe that uh, united states america should spend 100 billion dollars a year for educating a uneducated table be black white hispanic or whatever we need education and unless we have education and we have a training about what's going on we cannot do it okay the world is getting crazy in america we are crazy people are coming things suicide people are dying of drugs these are white dying of drugs and suicide and all those things happening and we cannot allow that and as long as this this uh, what do you call it a disk incoherence thing happening between one group and other group and third group and fourth group 
and I don't like it. Now, now I do not know why Mr. Paydock changed his mind on the union. Union was the whole thing, and I to fight with him. I said, I don't need unions everywhere. And he said, no, you need Starbucks. He was a big guy for union. And suddenly now, you know, he's dead. I think, I think one of, one of the things bothers me and bothers me as college of complex is, I think when this election, this runoff came up, there is a racial disparity. There, there, there are people here who should not be racist. We are Republic, we are Democrat. We are progressive. We believe in unions. Okay, right. We believe we, we believe uplifting the poor people. We have we we have a black uh, leader in a, in a Congress, and and we have black vice president here. Black vice, and those are all our people. Democratic party people, democratic progressive people, and if you want to be Republican for Chicago because it's convenient to you, you don't like the black guy, you know. Look, if you don't like a black guy, you got a problem. You got a big problem. Then probably sooner or later you have to move out of the black, out of the Chicago because they are going to be here. They are not going to disappear. They are not going to go away. Okay. So if you, if anybody thinks that uh, you know, you got to get along with the black people, you got to be able to deal with them, and and you got to work with them in a the government and every single place, and you got to get rid of from your mind on a racist thing because. No, no community alone, black or white or or uh, Latin or Indians or Jews can run this city. Look, we you know what happened when we had a Jewish mayor. Okay, he was supported by it because of the Barack Obama. He got elected. Other black people would not have voted for him. Okay, he he was he was a pure racist, and it, it is proven. He did not care for black people. He did not care for nobody. Okay, and, and this is reality. We don't we cannot have those kind of situations. Mayor Lightfoot, she made a mistake and we 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 learn from that mistake and we cannot have that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for giving me enough time that I wanted and I appreciate that. Tim, thank you. I'm done. Okay, who's next for uh, I'll speak a little bit myself on who I think would be the best. Mayor of Chicago amongst the two candidates. I never thought that I would agree with Charlie on something like this, but to make sure, uh, yeah, just turn that down a little bit. Yeah, there you go, there you go. Um, the thing is, is that what I'd like to say is that the, I would uh, support probably Paul Dallas for mayor. Why? Because he does have that connection with the uh, police department. I think right now Chicago is just going through some growing things. We need somebody in the uh, government who's experienced, who can run City Hall, who's well versed in city politics. And I just don't think a school teacher can do it. We need a good politician who can, you know, do, do the job. I mean, you've got, Chicago faces a lot of uh, troubles. And number one, it's overtaxed. Number two, um, you guys have a lot of trouble here with just trying to get the basics done, you know, on an automatic level sometimes. What you really need to do is learn from uh, McHenry County how efficient the government is out there. They do get things done. They do get things in there and they are a Republican stronghold. Perhaps maybe it's time we get a Republican mayor in Chicago. Um, the other person I'd like to really think that should consider running for mayor is Ricketts, the owner of the Cubs. He did a lot of junk. He really had relocated Wrigley Field and did it in a nice design and kept the uh, historic park great. And he did lead the Cubs to the World Series in 2016. The thing is, I think Ricketts would be a much more effective mayor than perhaps maybe Dallas was or will be. But right now, with the two candidates up there, I think Dallas will be our best choice. Now, if I was voting in Chicago, I'd probably have to vote for Dallas. And like I said, since I am from McHenry County, I don't have much to say about it except for the fact that uh, 
You want a city government that's ran efficiently, that keeps the street lights on, that runs the schools well, and is not subject to a lot of political machinations for the moment. I think Mayor Lightfoot got in a little bit over her head and she was a little bit too uh, quick to not compromise. The other thing is, is that Chicago has had a long, strong history of Democratic mayors. One of your most successful was that during World War II. I think, what was his name, David? The mayor of Chicago during World War II? Uh, Ed, Kelly. Ed Kelly. I think he ran from 32 to 47. And he was able to keep the city and a war footing during World War II and get it back into its peaceful acronyms during that same time. Dailies, the Dailies did the same thing to the city. They kept some form of stability in there, although, you know, his 2016 Olympic ring was effectively quashed. I think that was a good thing. And I think one of our more effective mayors over the last uh, 20 years or so was a former. Uh, what was the guy's name before Lightfoot? Rob Emanuel. Rob Emanuel was a decent mayor. I think if he'd have been on the third term, we'd have seen a whole different Chicago. I mean, he did take some shutdowns of this enrollment schools with less than 50 people, and it did need to be downsized because of the population of leaving Chicago. Now, as far as uh, investments downtown, we need to get rid of the tip districts because they are taking tax money from the local people around the area. And the other fact of the matter is, a lot of reform needs to go in. Perhaps they may be adding to consider our libertarian candidates coming in. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the other things. Anyway, I am not, if I was to, if I was a citizen of Chicago, and I had a choice between the two present candidates, I would probably vote for Dallas, for Ballas based on his experience, and based on the fact that he has had some ties with the government and has some experience in governing the city, and I think he would not, he would be a lot better than our other candidate. Thank you. All right. Who else has got something about you? Please get up there, David. Who's your candidate for mayor? All right. Go ahead. Let's get up there and uh, say who you'd like to vote for. Go ahead, go up. Get up and get you, get up there. Mr. Barton. Let's hear Mr. Barton. All right. Mr. Barton, your microphone's all yours. Hey, everybody. Happy Saturday. Hey. Uh, I'm not a current resident of the most beautiful city in the world, city of Chicago. So unfortunately, I can't vote. But uh, I would love to see one of these candidates support the uh, tax law salvester initiative. Uh, for one reason, it would generate much needed revenue for human services and communities in need of economic assistance, economic development. And uh, I just think it's the fair, equitable, democracy-structured uh, thing that most working-class communities support all throughout any community in the country. Where there's the most wealth, there should be a willingness on those whose cups run it over to contribute a fair share, not an excessive share, not a share that jeopardizes their opportunity to start entrepreneurships and whatever business pursuits they have. I, just, I think it's uh, it's about time that we uh, pull back the reins on greed in this country and tax and LaSalle district is our local initiative where we can start that long overdue uh, effort and I, I can't see anyone making a uh, an argument against uh, everybody <coughs> sharing equally and contributing to the pie because uh, there's an instinctive thing in Americans we don't like greed 
We don't like people who hoard all the wealth for themselves. And we instinctively know when there are people who have so much wealth, they have to keep it in offshore accounts. They literally have so much money, they can't keep it all in in a domestic account. Uh, that is not anyone's definition of securing the blessings of liberty or forming a more perfect union. So that's my two cents for the uh, mayoral election, humbly, because as I said, I'm not a current resident of city of Chicago. I wish I was because I love this city and I love the college of complexes. And those of you on Zoom, it's so great to hear your voices. I miss you very much. I hope to see you here soon. All right. Okay, Ernie, go ahead. Uh, Ernie, go ahead. Did you want to unmute Ernie? Wait a second. Are we already into the second phase? I don't know yet, but uh, did you want to say a few things? Yeah. I, no, no, I was just waving to the gentleman that uh, just... Okay. So, I, I, everybody else done and... All right, we're going to have one more guy from here talk about the mayor of the, of the thing. We have more to okay, well, anyway, go ahead. We got another guy here speaking about the mayor. Let me get a glass of water, too. So okay. I hope I don't float away while I'm doing this. No. We waited for everybody's food. Hey! Okay. Go ahead, sir. All right. Good to see you all, and I'm balling, uh, recovering from a cold this week, but finally recovering. So, uh, you know I've been a Libertarian Party supporter, and member, chair of the local chapter, active in the Illinois Party, and the national delegate a couple of times the national conventions, but looking at this nonpartisan race, I got to say, it's about as far apart these days as you will find two major Democratic Party candidates could be, you know, kind of the ballast from about as fiscally conservative as, you know, sort of the rightward end of the Democratic Party or what's left of it today. Uh, there's certainly been times when the party was more right-wing than that, but he's kind of a throwback to the the sort of fiscally conservative Democrats, budget conscious, technocratic. These are things that are both kind of good and bad about him. You would see in the 80s and 90s. It's kind of a vanishing species. And then Johnson on the other side is part of the, uh, you know, much more left wing, you know, revival, uh, openly and proudly socialist. So it's pretty oversimplified to try and say, like, well, Dallas is secretly a Republican. I mean, you know, we worked for the worked for the uh, daily mayoralty from 1995 to 2001, ran for governor in the Democratic primary in 2002, was Pat Quinn's running mate in 2014, and Pat Quinn lost to Bruce Rauner. Um, and yeah, I watched the old interview he did in 2009 where he, uh, with a public access cable host in the North suburbs, thinking about running for county board president, but not doing it. But I mean, yeah, he's still at the rightward edge of what, you know, the Chicago political spectrum. Um, and I'm from a more fiscally conservative viewpoint than then some as a libertarian. So relatively, that appeals to me more. Drawbacks about him, yeah, he's probably pretty beholden to his FOP support, even if they didn't donate money to him. Uh, but the truth is out there for a lot of voters, even traditional left liberal voters, there's a law and order vibe in this town right now with people I did not expect to have one. People who come up to me and say, I'm a Biden voting, you know, liberal and a member of the LGBT community, but A, crime needs to be under control, and B, what the hell is this, the common turn? When looking at Brandon Johnson. I will say who said that to me, but this was genuine conversation I had with him. LGBT, left liberal, Biden supporter, you know, et cetera, who is uh, uh, also a concerned citizen in Chicago. These are, you know, the kinds of comments I didn't expect. We've seen some of this in our discussion tonight. Uh, Johnson is the face of generational change. Sure, he's only a year and a half older than I am, so he's clearly in his prime, uh, and, and physically and everything else. But, uh, and, you know, the ballast is... One, maybe two terms if he wins and he's lucky. I'd be amazed if Vallis made it two or three since he's already starting a little later on the clock. Brandon Johnson's not going away anytime soon. I'm not thrilled to say that, but that guy's either going to end up 
running for Berrigan in four years if he doesn't win, or he's going to run for Danny Davis's congressional seat. Um, this isn't quite as linear as I thought it would be. Uh, Davis, I mean, I was shocked by some of these endorsements. Davis su supporting uh, Brandon Johnson didn't surprise me. Bobby Rush supporting Paul Vallis kind of surprised me. The dude co-founded the Black Panther Party and he's going for the white FOP candidate. So let me just tell you, time can change people. Um, this is, I did not expect that particular outcome this year, but I think there's going to be a lot of voting across ethnic lines, maybe in a slightly different way this time, because again, I've also met people from African-American neighborhoods who community activists who want economic populist programs for their neighborhoods told me last year, I want Dallas. We've got to get this shit under control with crime. Where, all right, that, I, I figured you might have said someone else. Like, no, Dallas. Not Wilson, Dallas. Uh, so Raj has a lot of you know, ethnic commentary that I wouldn't necessarily agree with, but this is cutting someone across ethnic lines. You see that with Wilson, who's become a sort of perennial candidate in these last few mayoral cycles with a mix of sort of law and order, pro-business, anti-tax, anti-regulation, and also a pinch of sort of black neighborhood populism. Wilson had a very unique mix, the kind of guy who could get black pastors and black homeless people, you know, and all points in between on the African-American social ladder, as well as like Northwest Side Republicans and, you know, he's come to a libertarian meeting or two where I've happened to talk with the man. Now, Wilson didn't make it to the second round. Now, I don't think all of Wilson, he's in North Dallas, I don't think all of Wilson's vote will show up with him on the balance column. Same thing with Chewy Garcia. Though. I think a lot of, there's a lot of older voters who voted for Garcia on round one who are going to say, yeah, but I don't want to vote for Johnson on round two. I think a lot of that is going to be on age lines. And, you know, relatively older people with more skin in the game might have a little bit more of that law and order vibe this year and want a little bit more of a strong hand. Even if that strong hand comes with big developer money um, and FOP ties that are not always thrilling, um, I think that that gives balance some edge with them. Meanwhile, with younger voters uh, in this town especially, those who are further left, they're going to be head over heels for Brandon Johnson. Um, you know, how Johnson got to office is interesting, too, because as a county commissioner, I mean, having just been reelected last November uh, against a libertarian candidate, he put up a hell of a fight for that county commissioner. So let me tell you. Um, but, you know, Johnson got had run against Richard Boykin. Uh, Richard Boykin, I was reminded of this, had two things that happened to him. African-American Democratic Party official. But in 2010, I guess he got in trouble because he supported Mark Kirk over Alexi Janulius for Senate because Janulius was, was now Secretary of State. But, uh, I think once upon a time, he was treasurer. Uh, had, there was a bank scandal on Janulius' record that year. And for whatever reason, Boykin didn't support him. And later on, he supposed County Board President Preckwinkle's flavored beverage tax, sometimes simplified as the sugar tax. So coming gunning for him seems like it might have been opportunistic. Uh, and they pointed this out in WBEZ, not a conservative news outlet, that the county commissioner, uh, county board of commissioners doesn't handle a lot of education policy for the CTU to expense a lot of money and resources to get Brandon Johnson into the 2018 county commissioner primary just to get him a government resume. It wasn't like he was going to affect a lot of educational policy there. Now, it's been widely discussed in this election that, I mean, he's, but some have used the phrase wholly owned subsidiary, but I mean, you know, the same way that Madigan would, or and Joe Berrios would set your property taxes and then have the law firm you need your property tax appeal, you know. Johnson has been still working at the CTU the whole time he's been a county commissioner since he was elected at the end of 2018. Uh, now I believe in a consultant's role rather than a formerly titled salaried role as an organizer. Um, but you'll have that there. And I mean, hey, they've each attracted a fair amount of support. I think it's going to be a nail biter. I don't know how this one's going to break. 
Uh, I don't know who's going to win. I think of what one of my colleagues said, the man who'd run against Mr. Johnson last fall, uh, had made a remark once that if Dallas wins, it would be a speed bump on Chicago's road to socialism. Whereas, you know, I guess if we had Brandon Johnson, we'll just accelerate there more directly. That may be, you know, I, I don't want to exaggerate. I don't think that if Brandon Johnson wins, it'll turn this place into North Korea or even Norway. Uh, you know, it'll be tax, spend, regulate, prohibit. Tax, spend, regulate, prohibit. It'll be, you know, torture by a thousand small cuts, hopefully not death. Hopefully not death. Some of us are still living here. We've been raising a child here. Um, I don't know if the utopian sounding slogans that Johnson uses and spend, spend, spend uh, will be able to produce much in the way of results. But I think he'd have, a, he'd have the city council ready to sign off on a lot of the spending plans, a Democratic supermajority in the state legislature, and a billionaire Democratic governor who doesn't mind signing his name on any spending bill because that always looks like pocket change to him. When you've grown up with the kind of resources that Mr. Pritzker has. Uh, so there's, if Johnson wins, there will be a test for all of my left wing friends. It, that, th this is the time to prove it works. You got a pretty clear runway if you've got a safe uh, lock on things in Springfield, as safe as you're going to get under the circumstances. And, you know, a left wing city council on the whole, and uh, a very left wing mayor. For Vallis, it could be a sort of reverse council wars from the 80s where you have a kind of center-right mayor up against a left-wing city council. I have no idea how that will play out. But I have those more you know, uh, resistant instincts when it comes to too much government authority myself. So I am inclined more towards Vallis, even if it's with uh, some reservations and some reluctance. And I'm going to be living here either way. So. We'll be finding out then. Let's see if I have anything else. Probably not uh, the weird endorsements. What happens if they read? I even made a couple of notes, but nowhere near enough. Oh, I'll take one more swipe of Preckwinkle. Um, and some of the other dinosaurs from the Harold Washington era. I mentioned Bobby Rush earlier. In between his Panther days and now, the Harold Washington era of newly arrived aldermen included him, Danny Davis, Luis Gutierrez, Chewy Garcia. Watch, I married into a CTU family, watching how they've turned, I, I could see the relative differences in some of their choices, but they were maybe a little cool to, to warm up to Chewy Garcia at first in 2015, but once he made the runoff, there was no question in their minds. They were Edo Williams. I could tell that even when Tony Preckwinkle made the runoff in 2019, they still knew she wasn't that impressive. They had their talking points. They, well, at least she's better than this other one who's getting corporate developer money. But I mean, the voters showed it. 74% for Lightfoot to 26% for Preckwinkle. Brandon Johnson, go back and watch the documentary. If any of you have not seen it yet, City So Real. It's available. It was on the National Geographic Channel. It was made by a Kartemkin Films, local independent film group. That the most famous work, I believe, was uh, Hoop Dreams back in the 90s. When I was a younger man. Uh, and it was a four or five hour documentary looking at the 2019 mayoral race, the aftermath of the Laquan McDonald case. And then they did a follow up episode uh, about uh, 2020. And Johnson is in that old footage uh, hovering around Lightfoot in the background. And she looks like she's slipping into dementia a lot of the time when she's off camera. You know, where's my sheet? Hand me my sheet so I can do my talking points. It was embarrassing that the CTU wasted money on a candidate in 2019 when they could tell she was not worth it. They could have spent their money on Amaria Enya in the first round or just held on to it and knew that they'd go on strike later if they didn't like the options out there. But they compromised that bullshit idealistic image that they sometimes put out about themselves. Sorry for saying it that way. Um, by backing a boring, old, ossified, you know, Harold Washington era turned machine alumna like Tony Preckling. It was a joke. However, they, I'm telling you, those same CTU folks are 
more passionate than you could imagine about recruiting one of their own former teachers turned union organizers. Proud democratic socialist who spent half of the last three weeks walking back his deep under police stuff. Because I think as Abigail Spanberger said, the congresswoman from Virginia, if, it, if you have to explain the slogan, doesn't mean the slogan, and it's a bad slogan. You know, people will think it means what you say it means. That's what I said. So Johnson is in real trouble with that, but the, 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 the teachers union folks and SEIU folks are more excited than they ever were for Chewy Garcia. I mean, knew they had a zombie when it was crackling. But this guy's going to be around for at least, like I said, barring anything else, like 20 more years of politics. He's in. I mean, some of these people are going to be bored if they don't retire. And, you know, I will retire from this accursed microphone and go back to my oh. finally arrived dinner table. Okay, uh, who's next? Justin, you want to put your two cents in since you always got something to say anyway? Um, so... I Why don't you Brandon, show yourself, Justin? So I uh, think that Brandon Johnson um, uh, is very inexperienced and uh, I don't like any of his policies. Uh, I think that socialism is is silly, and the fact that he is an open socialist uh, just shows how uh, misguided he is and how out of step he is with a lot of people. Um, he he uh, he puts himself with people like Rosanna Rodriguez and. Carlos Rosa, who I've heard with my own ears praise the Venezuelan regime. Um, certainly that doesn't mean that Johnson uh, shares that enthusiasm, but I don't know. It, uh, it's, it's too close for comfort for me. Um, Paul Vallis is, is not perfect. Um, I, I think it's uh, he seemed like he's, especially lately, kind of been all over the place. He spent a good early chunk of his campaign trying to court the sort of law and order and conservative vote. Um, and he, did ta he ended up tapping into the sort of big law and order sentiment, sentiment which seems to be the key issue in this election. Um so since he's not a socialist and since um, he has executive experience and he's fiscally conservative and he's pretty big on school choice, I'm probably going to vote for Paul Vallis. Um, and I would encourage everybody else to do the same. And Brandon Johnson sucks. That's all I got to say. All right. Uh, anybody else want to comment? Dan, Lana? Yeah, I'll talk. I'll okay. say it. Why don't you show yourself real quick on the video, too, so we can see you. Yeah, okay. You All see right. me now? Yes, we can. Okay, good. All right. So. Don't you have heat in your house or what? Didn't you pay your electric? Pay no, your I can't pay it. I can't pay our bills, no. So, um, yeah, Brandon Johnson is a socialist. Maybe he is, maybe he's not. But socialists scare Chicagoans and USA people. Like, look at Bernie. Bernie's a socialist, or he was a socialist, and he scared people. Woo! Socialism. But you got Social Security, Medicare. And of course, the Republicans are trying to get rid of that. And the Democrats are pretty soon going to agree with them. And then there'll be no more socialism in America. Yippee. So you can throw all the poor people under the bus. You can give a shit about them. But that's capitalism. You don't like that? You don't like capitalism? Move to Venezuela or Cuba or Mexico or uh, Russia or Vietnam or uh, 
Ukraine, you know, if you don't like it, lump it. If you don't like it, leave it. America, love it or leave it. So if you don't like socialists, don't be here. Uh, Bobby Rush supports Vallis. I don't know why. Maybe he, he was a Black Panther a long time ago and he has cancer. His wife died. So maybe he's a little depressed. But uh, in my ward, 50th ward, the alderman was scaring people, you know, right into your, to your alderman and say how crime affected you. She, she didn't say right in and say how, you, how to make the ward better. She said she wanted to scare people. And you know what? She scared people. So she got 70% of the vote. And the socialists running against her got 30%. And that's America for you. They scare you. Like Joe McCarthy scared people, scared communists, threw them out of the country, killed them, sent them to prison. That's the way of America. Love it or leave it. So yeah, I'm for Brandon Johnson. And you can call me crazy or stupid or a socialist or a communist or a, a, a Jew. I don't care. You can call me all those things, but I'm still for Brandon Johnson. So if you are voting on Tuesday or if you're voting early, I think you should vote for Brandon Johnson. You know, unions aren't all that bad. Charlie, I thought you were for the unions. Now you're against union people. That's bad. That's not good. That's not a, a comp, that's not a attack. That's a observation. I hope you become a good union person in your old age. And Raj, thank you for your talk. I, I liked it a lot. And uh, Justin, good for you. I'm glad you're a, a Republican. It's good, good for America. Makes America stronger. And I think that you should vote for Brandon Johnson. Thank you. That's all I got to say. Okay. Uh you want to start the question period now? All right. You want uh, to go, ahead, go ahead, David. Go ahead, Dave. All right, David. We're going to get your neck. Your your thoughts next. My thoughts, such as they are, are modest. Um. Thank you. Um. I'm for Paul Ballas for mayor. I think he has the most experience. Yes, I'm troubled by some of the stuff that he's taking life. And the guy who wants to sit it out. We can't hear you, sir. The guy who wants, I'm, yes, I'm sort of troubled by the fact that he's taking life and the guy who wants to sit it out. And having said that, having said all that, he has the most experience. And I've been a crime victim myself on the wall. I knew that crime is out of control and that something needs to be done about it. And Paul Mallow seems to be the only thing and not, not running the drive. And essentially, I disagree with those folks who say that Paul Mallow is some kind of closet Republican. He is no more a closet Republican than Brandon Johnson is a, is a closet communist. It's because I disagree with Brandon Johnson's far left wing view does not make him a communist. And it doesn't make Paul Ballas a, 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 a right a far right wing Republican far right wing Republican either. So I'm backing Paul Ballas from there. Uh Tim, can I go? Okay, yeah, go ahead, Rod. Do you have any other uh, uh, the, I don't know if we have anybody else. Point of order: How many uh, how many presentations are people going to give tonight? All of them. All of them. So is this rebuttals or is this presentation part two? Well, we don't exactly have Q and A, so we, we don't exactly have Q and A, but uh, we can go to uh, question and answers now. Um, okay, Charlie, how do you want to handle things? Q and A. Oh, have we gone? Has everyone who wanted to speak? 
on the first round at an opportunity. You have not asked the audience. Has everyone who wanted to speak out on the cam campaign had an opportunity to do so? Is anybody remaining who has not spoken and would like to? Anybody Margaret. else want to speak? Margaret Perry, they didn't want to. Elvin left? Elvin left, yes. Oh, Elvin I know, but he's from the UK. All right, Brad. Uh, okay. Anybody else? All right, Charlie, what's, what do you want to do next? Okay, now, since we've got end of round one, we open it up to round two. Rebuttals, remarks, questions. Uh, uh, here's your opportunity, round two. Okay, so this is questions and answers in round two, correct? Yeah. All right, so do you want to start it off, Charlie? Well, I... No. I mean, let, why don't you go ahead and start off round two? I think Raj wants to speak. All right, Raj, go okay. ahead. Can, can, I, can, can I ask somebody, or anybody who want to answer, that uh, where, where do you see a socialism or a communism in this country? And uh, unless unless you call Democratic Party a communist party, okay? Can anybody answer me? Where do you where do you see that? Or who can who can do it? That part? how Johnson how Brandon Johnson can do a communist or a socialist philosophy? Except the running a good city, just just like a a Jewish mayor of Minneapolis is doing it. He's doing a great job. Young man, you know, he was he was mayor at 37. He had an excellent job. Okay, and he came from foreign country. And uh, the, it's not a socialist or capitalist, he's just doing what is right. And I think I think probably everybody's trying to do what is right. Okay. Even even, even um, so, I mean, can anybody ex please explain to me? The where you see socialism, you know, in a America, and what do you mean by socialism? I'll take the first bite of that apple. I don't know how you want to define your terms, Raj. Around 41 or 42 percent of American gross domestic product is generated by taxpayer government spending, when you combine state, local, and federal. In Scandinavia, it's a little over 50. In some of the other European countries, it's in the high 40s. In some of the cheaper European countries, it's more like the high 20s. Southern Europe around the Mediterranean. So it's already, as uh, our Liverpudlian friend Kelvin left, you live in a mixed system, right? Mixed. Yes. It's a mixed system. Wait, is Kelvin back? No, he's not. Oh, damn it. All right. Now, in terms of where do I see it in American politics? I get it. It's weaker than in Western Europe or in a lot of other countries that had a larger, more vigorously socialist movement, more self-consciously socialist movement. It's watered down because in part with the two-party system, this was stuff that was absorbed into two 19th century parties. Uh, you know, the Democratic and Republican parties in various ways during the progressive era and has been passed out of their bloodstreams from time to time as well, uh, you know, but it was sort of incrementalism and uh, cherry picking, like Eugene Debs, the socialist candidate for president in the early 20th century complained in the 1912 election, they're all stealing my issues. Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, former president running again as the progressive candidate when we split the Republican Party, Roosevelt is stealing my issues. Woodrow Wilson, the Democratic nominee, he's stealing my, my platform points. Even William Howard Taft, the sitting Republican president, he keeps stealing my things. You know, oh, restrictions on child labor or, you know, what minimum wage law or regulation on industry. It was stuff that was cherry picked. Now, if we get to where does socialism come from in intellectual political culture? Sure, it's at the leftward edge of the Democratic Party, smaller third parties a lot of single issue activist community, although that sounds derogatory. The groups are named in such a way that they are single issue activism groups, but a lot of the personnel, Jonathan is smiling in the back row, a lot of the personnel can overlap. Where do we see it in terms of governance? 
well. I know on Charlie's wall, we see another marvelous, the, the Bernie endorsed Johnson. So we've got the Bernie signs and the Vallis signs. You know, Bernie was elected mayor of Burlington, Vermont, which currently has a population smaller than my ward. And it was a smaller population 40 years ago when, when Bernie Sanders was first elected mayor. Oh boy, that's not even like being the mayor of Edgewater. But uh, Mr. Johnson, how do I know Mr. Johnson is a socialist? This is not McCarthyist. He calls himself one. He went to the socialism conference that my Trotskyist mother-in-law who works for the Chicago Teachers Union also went to. I don't have to tell you which branch of Trotskyist because we're not married. Only my wife and I are. But, uh, you know, it's out there. It's not especially large. I'll tell you, there's a small number of teachers who are very actively engaged in their union. It's not like the rank and file is mostly different branches of Trotskyism. But in terms of people I've met at the CTU, oh yeah, some of them have passed through those goalposts. You know, the ISO dissolved. Jesse Sharkey was in the ISO big time. Uh, and he had left as the CTU chair a couple of years ago. But Johnson, I think, is more DSA variety. He's not running around with a beret trying to start a paramilitary group like Congressman Rush was trying to do 53, 54 years ago. Uh, it was the 60s. It happened. And I assume he wasn't the informant because they found the informant and killed himself. Um, he was interviewed in Eyes on the Prize Part 2, the guy from uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, the real life guy. Really? Who informed on Fred Sr. But you know, Raj, it's not like made up in this context. It's no, and it's no more made up. It's sort of like, well, yeah, Vallis is getting money from conservative donors because it's the best they can find in in a solidly democratic party town. And there's you know a lot of other times where you know, they kept betting on a the labor movement kept betting on a corpse or a scandalized figure like Mr. Burke or Mr. Madigan. Uh, anyhow, I'll let the next questioner come up. I can, I can tell you at socialist hour, when COVID people start, COVID government start giving your money for COVID to business people, business people lined up to get the money. The oh, billion, the billions of dollars here. they got it, they line it up. Yeah. yeah, and so they are socialists because they wanted government money. Capitalists do not take government money. They do not want government money. Uh, but this big corporation were lining up there. Well, Charles, you know. Yeah, but Darren Bailey was one of the worst with his agribusiness. I heard he was good at getting the uh, uh, payroll protection, whatever it was. I'm forgetting the full acronym right now. And part of why he tanked. All right. Who else has got? So I'd like to ask a question. Go ahead, Charlie. During my presentation and, and Ernie as well, neither one of us mentioned race, uh, religion, or ethnicity. Yet, I heard both Adam and uh, Raj, Raj discuss nothing, almost nothing, but race, religion, and ethnicity. I don't believe that has any place whatsoever in our electoral process. Why are you guys trying to inject it in there? You find it so odd that that a black individual office holder would support a white candidate. I was playing that's off. Not, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not, I'm sorry. I gave my entire presentation and you couldn't tell which candidate. You could tell you, I didn't mention any of that at all whatsoever. Guys. And yes. I, 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 like I was voting, recommending a Martian. It has God. no place. I actually heard a statement there that white people are incapable of governing the city of Chicago. Said, if I am correct. Now that's, I'm sorry. That is, that, that position has God. no business here. I heard another thing, a Jewish mayor of Minneapolis. He's not a Jewish mayor of Minneapolis. He's a mayor of Minneapolis, sir. Well, Charlie, I think you forget the entire issue here. People are in the mm -hmm. city of Chicago because of the high taxes and the infringement upon their civil liberties in the city itself. 
I mean, I can go into... <laughs> what does taxation have to do with civil liberties? It's simple. You don't have as much money to uh, spend in the city of Chicago. Sit because down. Taxes. One full at a time, Charlie. The thing is, is that uh, we, uh, you know, people are leaving Chicago. I mean, if I... If I get involved in the criminal justice system, particularly in the parking violations area, I'm stuck. I will probably wind up losing my car because of the excessive towing fees. Don't forget you got your city stickers, your higher property taxes. And the other fact is, is that you're paying twice as much for a pack of cigarettes in the city of Chicago as you would outside of the burbs. It's no wonder people are leaving the city. And then when you get into your public school systems, you know, you've got these medical teachers unions here who get to cooperate with the government. Of course, people are leaving the city. It's losing population. And of course, you know, that's one of the reasons the Republicans are saying, you know, these Democrat-ran cities are starting to uh, overtax their people. And of course, this radical leftist agenda that's been going on with the this stuff, you know, it's in there. To me, what does LGBTQ mean? Let's get fighting to quit. Charles, Charles. Timothy. I, Timothy. I, I, I voted twice for Jewish mayor. Oh, no. And I voted twice for Jewish governor. <laughs> and I voted several times for my Jewish, con Jewish uh, congressman. I I just, and I voted too as well, but I just voted. And, I, and I voted I just several voted times. Time. Yeah, all right. You uh, voted for a particular ethnic group. Don't tell me that. Oh, really? I voted for candidate. Naughty, Charles. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's hear from Jake. All right, Jake. Hello? Uh, yeah, we got you, Jake. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, I kind of came in the middle here. Uh, can you hear me? Um, yes, we can hear you, Jake. Uh, um, yeah, not, 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 not only do you pay twice as much as you do in the suburbs, but uh, you, also the crime rate is up, so you get twice as... You pay twice as much to get mugged than you do in the in the suburbs. Crime rate is way up. Crime rate on the on, on the trains is up. Uh, you know, maybe 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 they're maybe they're overemphasizing it on the media, but I see crime rate is up to like three or four percent, and it makes a lot of people feel nervous. I, I remember uh, this was about a year ago or so. It was a, a woman who spoke anonymously on the television news. She had just been hijacked. Uh, she had just been carjacked at gunpoint. And she's quoted as saying, I, I'm not clear where. I think it was in the downtown area, but that's not clear beside the point. She's quoted as, she quote, she's quoted as saying, my, my lease is up at the end of the month, and, um, and, and this, is, this is it. I'm over. I'm, I'm, I'm not renewing it. It's, it's, it's a shame. I really love the city, but I don't feel safe here. That's all she said. She didn't say... Who it was? Who 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 it was? Who, oh, and then they took they took the stolen car and used it to uh, rob a liquor store or something. And she said, she said, I don't feel safe here, so I'm out of here. She didn't say she didn't say how where she's going. She didn't say what she's doing for work. She just said, I'm done with the city because I don't feel safe here. And I would wonder how many, she was just one person, but I would wonder. How many people are thinking the same thing? Are going through the same thing? They're 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 essentially voting with their feet. They're just leaving because they can't deal with the crime in the city anymore. Jake, the number one issue of this campaign. There's two issues: crime and schools. Say so yes. Yeah. I thank you. I think the candidates are aware that crime is an issue. There's only two issues here. Right. 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 So you're telling us what everyone knows. Right. So well, I'm just repeating something. I'm just repeating something I read in the news. Okay. Uh, and the right. lesson to the is who's got the better solution? Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know, but 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 uh, what Brandon Johnson tells me um, it sounds like he's just he's he's just not really facing the problem. Right. He says he's got community policing he wants. I've heard this term. He also wants yeah. a holistic approach 
to police. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't either. I, I don't either. And I quite frankly, I don't. Means... Okay. I'm not, I'm not finished. Okay. <laughs> quite frankly, I don't, I don't, I go on, ju judging, judging from his rhetoric, I don't trust him. All right. I saw Ernie had raised his hand. I have uh, been temporarily again stationed while uh, Tim is away from the computer. Ernie, would you give us a second round of your wisdom and or inquiry well, or both? I suppose I, I hold on a second here. Yeah, I can. I can do so. I'm not really ready for the whole second round, but there are people who have asked questions that I want to make comments on. Uh, we're, we're getting, we're getting, and the first of the uh, right regarding regard, regarding socialism and communism in America, probably, probably never going to be uh, any more than it has been at a few times in the past. The if we look at it realistically, most nations and most people are amalgams of different systems. There are very right. few people who are 1,000% capitalist, and there are very few that are 1,000% communist or socialist. We all have a blend. I know I have a blend. I'm, I consider myself a free market capitalist, but I am a socialist on certain issues, uh, you know, on, on city services, on education, and, and, and police, etc., schools. These all should be uh, common, commonly controlled and paid for ent entities. That's socialism. Our libraries, our socialist institutions, and 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 I don't think we want to get rid of all of them. And if you look, what I like to do when I compare to other countries, I look at the percentage of GDP that is controlled or spent by the government. And for most Western nations, it's somewhere between the high 20s and the high 30s. And we're toward the low end of that, but not at the extreme low end. Uh, and as, as you get higher, then you tend to be have more money controlled by the government. Europeans are taxed much higher than we are, but they don't complain because they think they're getting their money's worth for taxes. So, yes, I think we are partially socialist. But we may be moving in the city. We're moving in that general direction uh, a little bit now because the progressive caucus is growing and the and the and the conservative areas uh are, are not as powerful as they were, but that'll ebb, it'll ebb and flow as it always, it always does. And there's a place, you know, it's just a matter of uh, how much socialism you have uh, as to whether you're comfortable with it or not. Uh, all countries, including, and, and, the, and the communist and socialist countries that uh, we have are also partially capitalist and always have been. Uh, Russia's got a lot of capitalists. They aren't doing very well with it, but they have it. Uh, China is doing well with capitalism, uh, but primarily socialist. So, you know, we're we're all we're all a blend, and and that's uh, what I want to point out on that. The other thing is crime, crime, crime. The the two issues. I disagree with Charlie that those are the only two issues. Those are the two big issues, and they're made into the two big issues by the politicians, by the statements, and by their campaigns. Uh, I don't believe that crime is the primary thing that is is facing Chicago now. I've lived here for over 50 years. Uh, I've never been a victim of a violent crime, and I've been a victim of... Uh, You're lucky. Well, fine. Good. I'm lucky. But there's a hell of a lot of people like me that have never been, or maybe once in 30, or 30 years. Uh, I've had my car broken into twice. I've had my apartment broken into once and a storeroom broken into once in 50 years. So my ex my experience may be exceptional, but I, it's still I don't think it's it's the the primary issue for most Chicagoans. Uh, I think fiscal issues, financial issues. How are we going to pay for the services that we have? Um, and and I I I I don't think that the crime is not an issue. I just don't think it's the most important issue, and it does need to be dealt with. And and I don't really care for for any of the programs uh, that are out there. I don't care for Johnson cutting back 150 million dollars and and i don't think that you can solve crime by putting out more and more and more policemen so uh anyway that's those those were a couple things that i wanted to comment on and um uh, and charlie says the other education the other issue is education i agree with that that's an important uh issue too i think transit and development uh infrastructure is an important issue nobody is saying much of anything about that and and but I think the fiscal issues, the business of how are we going to pay for this? One of the experiences I had with all these aldermen that we were uh, interviewing 
is none of them. They all swore on a Bible on their mother's life they would not raise property taxes. And <laughs> none of them, none of them would say what they would raise. We asked each of them, how are you going to pay? How are you going to pay for all of these programs that we should be having and you think we should have and we should improve? And the, all six of them went through a litany of things like, like, well, we're going to convince more people to move back into the city so we'll have a bigger tax base. And some people said opportunity zones and all kinds of things like that. Nice little ideas, but not going to pay the bills. Not a one of them would, would admit that they would raise any taxes at all. And to me, this is just this is just uh, crazy. We've got to raise taxes. This is why I, I like and I kind of think about voting for Brandon Johnson, even though I don't like a lot of things. At least he's admitting that we're going to have to raise taxes and we should raise taxes to pay for what we have to pay for. Um, and I, I may still have a little more, but let me turn the floor back. Uh, can, can I say something? Yeah, go ahead, Raj. Uh, the, 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 what you are saying, I mean, what you are saying is, uh, makes lots of sense. Okay. But what is happening, what is happening is that Americans do have a lot of money. Because uh, in spite of government saying that, hey, don't buy, don't buy, Reserve Bank is trying to clamp down. I mean, people are spending money. They are spending money like crazy. And that's why we have inflation. And if they are not spending money, they have no money, we will not have this problem. You know, and, and, and uh, this, is, this is reality, like it or not. But, uh, but uh, that is truth. That means uh, that there are some money. The other thing is that the services we want is increased. We want more and more services, you know. And in the city of Chicago, I want, I want a better road. I want a better sidewalk. I want my bicycle path. You know, I want all of these things. And, and I want an entertainment city to provide. I want better park. I want better lakefront. You know, and I live by lakefront, and I know how many, how much we enjoy it. I don't like to give up my 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 lakefront, but you know, in, in the diversity harbor to Belmar, we have a beautiful, beautiful life. Okay, and and I pay extra money for my apartment for having that life. And uh, but what government government is paying a lot to keep it those things. My sidewalk is good. My roads are good. Okay, my shopping facilities are good. The, 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 the buses are good. They take me to other places. I don't even have a car, you know. So, I mean, you know, it's a mixed bag, what we want. Okay, uh, Jan, you got your hand up. We're gonna let you go next. Why don't you uh, show yourself and uh, let us go ahead. So go ahead, Jan. Well, um, I would say the most extraordinary thing, you, you know, I just got here I um, about, 20 minutes ago, but um, I would say the most extraordinary thing that I've heard is that capitalists don't want government money. This is obviously <laughs> not true. And I wanted to give an example of this. Um, the state of Illinois granted $3 billion, with a B, $3 billion to Constellation Energy so that they wouldn't close down nuclear power plants in Illinois because they were uneconomical. They couldn't make a profit on them and they took um, taxpayer money to stay in business so they could continue the nuclear power plants. Then, um, the, then uh, Palisades over in Michigan was gonna close down and it, it did close down because it was not making it, it not only was not making money it had become quite dangerous and they had not been making repairs because of a planned shutdown and they shut down early they shut down a few months earlier than their plan because they were um, unable to continue using their facilities because they had got worn out and become unusable and they are now bidding for uh, the governor of Michigan, uh, um, well, I obviously I can't think of her name. She she is Gretchen Whitmer. Whitmer, uh, what what Whitmer? Yeah. 
Gretchen. Gretchen, Gretchen Whitmer. Gretchen. Gretchen Whitmer. Yeah, she is trying to get money out of the federal government from her <laughs> uh, pal, um, Jennifer Granholm, who was governor of Michigan before her, who's now Department of Energy Secretary. So they are uh, trying to get money to keep Palisades open, which will require $7 billion to do the old repairs and get it going. And then in California, uh, uh, Diablo Canyon was closing and it was a very, very long negotiation to close Diablo Canyon. And, um, and that was just turned upside down by the governor, Gavin Newsom, that they are now bidding for federal money so that they so that they can keep um, they can keep um, Diablo Canyon open, and they're just begging. Well, they're not. They don't even have to beg. The government is just dishing out money to these corporations so that they can continue to run uneconomic nuclear power plants. So uh, I, this is just one example, and I know there are many of corporations well look what happened when uh when the uh, car companies were going to be closing down they got a huge bailout from the government so it's a very extraordinary thing to say that corporations that capitalists uh, it wasn't corporations that was the word used it was capitalists don't want government money i heard this just like that and it's can't it, it's impossible to let something like that pass when it is so untrue. We call it. We call it. We call it. We call it. We call it socialism for the rich, right? Right. Okay. A absolutely, it is socialism for the capitalists, and so it's called. It's called socialism. <laughs> the socialism for um, recession. It's called socialism for. Capitalism and cap and capitalism for the rest of us. Damn, damn, it's your, your Go ahead, Raj. You are the capitalist. Defend it. Go ahead. We're all we're all dependent on capitalism because we live in a capitalist system. We have the system that we live in is the system we live in. It's not that we don't think that it could be better and it should be different. Okay. All right, so go ahead and let's, who else has got a comment, please? Yeah, I do. She's, right. entirely, she's entirely correct. Uh, they, these guys, the libertarians in particular, always parade up and down the block about free market capitalism. But time and time again, they get, they, so the free market capitalism, oh, they say communism doesn't work. However, time and time again, and there are numerous examples, Chad, exceeding that, that capitalists have gone to the government because they have failed, failed outright. Um, during the pandemic, the government had to give them money. Many of those businesses did not choose to purchase insurance uh, to cover periods of emergency situations or catastrophic situations. They simply chose not to, therefore the government had to save them. Of course, Obama uh, had to come in and save Wall Street. Uh, he also saved it entirely correct. The automotive industry was saved uh, uh, through the government in invention. Any number of ex other examples uh, can come forth. Um, yet I'm told all constantly that uh, communism doesn't work. Yet I see numerous and countless examples. He only gave a few that capitalism, in fact, uh, is not working and requires government intervention in terms of financial allot uh, allotments 
in order to keep an operation. That's all. Thank you. All right, Justin. I got a question for Charlie about his older manic race, but uh, Justin's got his hand up, so I'll wait. Okay, Justin, go ahead. Justin, go ahead. So, uh, Charlie contradicted himself just now. He Show said we live in a. Justin. He Show said that we lived in a free market capitalist society, yet uh, people go to the government to get handouts or whatever. That seems to not follow. So if I, I mean, if it was free market, I would say that that those sort of opportunities for people to exploit taxpayer money would be more minimalized. And this idea that socialism is just when the government provides services, socialism is when there's libraries and roads and schools, that's that's uh, that's silly too. I mean that that socialists aren't yeah, socialists call for those things. Um but it, ultimately it's it's complete socialization of the entire economy where there is no markets. There is no private property. So um, to say that socialism is just when government provides services is ridiculous. And who's ever, please mute if you're not speaking. Um, now I've heard, uh, uh, going back to some things that Dan had said, and looks like he's off the call now, but he said McCarthy killed people and that I'm a Republican and I don't know. He said a lot of things that didn't quite make any sense to me. Um, and some of which seem to not be any ba based in any facts. Um, yes. Brandon Johnson spoke at a conference. Um, Socialist conference. I mean, this is not a secret. He's a socialist. So ultimately, he wants no capitalism. And I don't think that, you know, if Brandon Johnson is just like, oh, well, maybe we, I want a free market, but with like some services. Well, I mean, I don't think that really makes you a socialist. I mean, most people think that sort of, you know, a lot of people want some, you know, a certain amount of services, but a lot of those folks will not identify as socialists. So socialism is when the government does things or provides services is, is, is uh, reductive and inaccurate. Um, I guess that's all I got for now. Okay, we're going to go back to live at Dappers and then Jen. Live at Dappers. Uh, piggybacking off my colleague there. You, when we play those sorts of definitional games, like I had shown earlier about Eugene Debs complaining about the 1912 presidential campaign, most people, when they're enthusiastically describing themselves as a socialist, aren't going to say, I'm a socialist, just like William Howard Taft. It, right, usually it means they want a more affirmative and thorough move in the direction of larger government share. Even if it's incomplete, and there's many variations, social dem from you know social democratic to uh, little we little anarchist communes that would be self-governing, uh, one presumes. A story also about this sort of mayoral baiting. I'm reminded of this when I lived away from the Midwest for about a decade, or at least away from the Chicago area. I lived in San Francisco for a few years. And San Francisco has a somewhat more left-wing vibe than Chicago, and I would say Chicago is still, you know, as a major American city, more progressive than a lot, a lot more left-leaning than a lot of the rest of the United States, but San Francisco is smaller and just that much more with a leftist culture. Uh, and there, I remember the 2003 mayoral election the caterwauling and complaining there, there was actually, it's a, it was again a nonpartisan election, but it was between a sort of moderate pro business Democratic Party figure uh, who is, it's a city and county combined, who's on the, the Board of Supervisors then, who was the, you know, moderate liberal 
candidate, if you will, I guess the Green Party challenger, who was also on the board of supervisors, so from you know different neighborhoods. I can barely hear you. Well, I'll try to do better, baby. Is that better? All right. So I don't want to get us kicked out of the restaurant because we're such an unruly group. Tim, maybe you can watch the amplifier here. Okay. So they tried to paint the moderate, relatively moderate pro-business Democratic candidate for mayor, even though it's nonpartisan, as rel as the he's still better than a Republican. He's just a stooge of the billionaires. Who's Gavin Newsom? All right. No one looks at Gavin Newsom now and thinks, well, that guy's just the same as George W. Bush and Ronald Reagan. But this was the shit they were saying in San Francisco in the early 2000s when he was on the Board of Supervisors and when he was first elected mayor. Also, in the 2003 election, San Francisco, we had our newly elected district attorney, the get tough new DA, Kamala Harris, who is now the vice president of these United States. And in between her terms as DA in San Francisco, she was, of course, then a statewide attorney general of California before she made her way to the US Senate nomination in 2016 and onto the more national stage. But I remember her back then, and she was the get tough DA. Some of these people will change what you think as time goes on, just like former beret-wearing paramilitary Congressman Rush being for Mr. FOP Vallis these days. Shit will turn out in unexpected ways. Forgive me for being colloquial, Erica, and thank you for taking care of our- I can't hear more than you I'm trying to be loud, but you got- One full at a time. This forking dice, all right? Okay. Well, this SOB on the- Zoom is complaining I'm not loud enough. I'm sorry, this kind gentleman on the Zoom is complaining I'm not loud enough. Yeah, I can't sit right next to you if you're on the computer. Okay, Jan, you're next. It's the speaker quality. It's not the loudness that's the problem. All right, Jan, you're yeah. next. I, I agree that the speaker quality is a problem. Um, I just yeah. wanted to remind No people personal attacks. Audio just, no, not the, not the, the, I wasn't the, personal. I, I just mechanics. can't hear I, him. I meant the mechanics. The I didn't microphone. mean the speaker. I meant the, I meant the, the loudspeaker and the, the, the mechanics of the event, not him. The microphone. And Tim is supposedly working on this, but Tim, you've been working on it for a long time. Those of us at home just cannot properly hear the speakers that are there. We can hear each other, but we can't hear the people that are there live. Well, yeah, because we can talk as loud almost as Almost without people. exception. Yeah, we, okay. So I, I wanted to bring up the, uh, the most recent example of capitalists uh, begging for government money, which is the Silicon Valley Bank, where the people oh. did not purchase insurance and they got the insurance without buying it because the bank did not want to see this, the, the um, feds did not want to see the Silicon Valley Bank fail. But the biggest example, and my very favorite, because I'm an anti-nuclear activist, is that um, nuclear power plants have a limit on what they will have to pay for if there is an accident. They do not have to buy insurance against any accident because there is no, ins there is no insurance company that would dare give them insurance if there's an accident you and i will pay for it not the not the corporation that's been making money off of nuclear power this is called the price anderson act and it's been in effect for a long time um no nuclear power plant can get insurance from a private insurance company because the risk is too high does uh, that pertain to thorium reactors as well? There aren't any. If somebody wanted to build one full at a time, they couldn't get insurance. <laughs> okay, are we uh, right, Jenny? Are you done? Or? Well, I, I, the question about the reactors that don't exist has no answer. Well, if I wanted to build a reactor, no company would insure. Off enable me to purchase insurance in the event 
It didn't work. Yep. No, in the event of an accident. Yeah. It's called the it's called the Price Anderson Act, and there are a lot the the um, uh, uh, what's his name uh, Milton Friedman, Mr. Free Market once once quoted as saying, the Price Anderson Price Anderson Act is the antithesis of the free market system. There are a lot, a lot of libertarian types who are opposed to nuclear power because of the Price Anderson Act. All right, I'm going to go next because uh, I got a couple things to say here myself. <laughs> Okay. Well, we're lots of fun. Well, the point of the matter is this. When it comes to the thorium reactor not existing right now, just go to China and it's desert where they got a test run going right now with potential commercialization in less than two years. So far, since November of last year, the Chinese government, which stole our uh, proprietary information from the 60s when we put our reactor out, and we did all that work at Oak Ridge. They took and they put, put in a further development of thorium molten salt reactor in the middle of uh, the Chinese desert. Now they're gonna be commercializing these things and making them available to the world. And the point of the matter is this, is that, you know, you're not gonna, any guy who's claiming to be wanting to, I, it is my contention that anybody who is anti-nuke and wants to stop climate change is crazy because nuclear power is going to be here as an instrumental mix for powering our electric cars, for powering our electric society, and for making sure that we have enough power to maintain an advanced industrial lifestyle, which the rest of the world wants to catch up to us on. And as far as the Canyon is concerned, it's been running for quite a while, and it's not polluting. It does have the nuclear waste, which can be recycled. How many years did Chernobyl operate? Hey, Charlie, one full at a time, bro. Without an accident. One full yeah. at a time. One full at a time. How long was Chernobyl? One full at a time. One full at a time. Mile Island. One full at a time. <laughs> and then they exploded. One full at a time. Tim, it's a question of who gets to pay for it. Well, the thing is, is that it's going to require some government intervention and some things like this. Now, I know that we have uh, uh, Raj wants to go next, so uh, but before Raj goes... <laughs> I, I have a question we haven't talked about. All right, uh, go ahead. Okay, what is happening to white people? Do we don't see that. I mean, in a mayor's election, where a 70-year-old man Okay, which are kind of a carpet beggar. But what happened to the rest of the white community? That that, that no no nobody was there, you know, you know, in a running for to be mayor of Chicago. What's going on? Raj, don't we have two white people running right now for the mayor of Chicago? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, what happened to, whatever happened to young people? People in 30s, 40s, just like A lot of them are sick of hearing this racial politics stuff. I don't care what race or color the person is, as long as they can do the job. Well, I don't believe in that because uh, it hasn't been it hasn't been true. Let's, let's be realistic. I mean, okay. I mean, you can talk about you know you know hey, white people are supporting Paul Wallace, okay, and uh, and the black people are supporting Brendan Johnson. I mean, uh, so I mean, if you want to pretend that we are closer, then we are not. The 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 that 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 guy from uh, what do you call Bibi? He was caught. He was eating at a non kosher joint in London, and so now he is advocating the the kosher in Israeli. So now politicians are getting on him. That is, say, hey, why were you eating non kosher food in London? Well, that's a lie. Well, anyway, you know, London's a whole different ballgame. They got soccer over there and they don't have baseball like we do here. Yeah, really? Like I said, I think our best candidate for mayor would have been Paul Ricketts, who got the Cubs to the Chicago World Series, rebuilt Wrigley Field, and is bringing a renaissance to the uh, north side of the city. Perhaps maybe we should have him. All right, who's next? I have a point of objection before Jan jumps All right, in. point of objection, and Jan, right. you go next. Tim, there are no I'm attacks. Now look, 
<laughs> the North Side resident is we, the people of the North Side, who brought the Renaissance to the North Side. Ah. Ricketts just has some of the money, but it was before the stadium got overhauled. There was already, in all seriousness, the gentrification of the North Side, in part by people like my 1960s radical in-laws who decided to stay in the city instead of move to the suburbs. And all, all of a sudden, they went from starving artist-level earnings, you know, in the 1970s to you retired with a pension and such at a later age. All right. Jan back up in the I think Jan's up there against it. Go ahead, Jan. I'm up Jan. Jan, you're up. You got your hand up. Are you ready? Yes, yes I am. Um, I guess in, the, in the first place. Go ahead, Jan. Uh, much as I like and appreciate Tim, I really resent being called crazy because I have studied and I have looked at this and it has been my area of, of paying, I've been paying attention to the nuclear power plant issue for a long time now. And I really don't call Tim crazy because I think he's right. really interested in thorium. And I think there's a lot of- I apologize, Jen. I totally accept your apology and let's just drop that. Uh, okay. The ad hominem stuff is really should be out because um, I respect Tim's opinion. So that, that was my first thing. And um, then I wanted to mention one of the gurus of our movement is named Mark Z. Jacobson. He what? is a professor at uh, Stanford University and um, he knows more about the atmosphere than God. Uh, both ways. He probably knows more about the atmosphere than God does, and he probably knows more about the atmosphere than he knows about God. But anyway, um, he he has written a new book called No Miracles Necessary, where and it's the second time he has gone through the the question of whether renewable energy could supply our need and whether batteries can um, bridge the gap between wind and be, between the air, the times when wind and solar is not functioning. And um, he uses the example of his own house and his own life. Um, and, uh, this person has, there are videos, many videos available where he explains his point of view and supports it with his own research. So I think that before we say that it's not possible for renewables to um, fill in the gap of our energy needs, you should examine his work. Uh, he wrote a textbook for uh, students at, at Stanford called 100% Renewable Energy for Everything Everywhere. And, um, oh, his name is... Um, Mark Z. Jacobson, J-A-C-O-B-S-O-N. And it's, uh, it's a very important name for um, people to understand what is possible without nuclear energy and um, without uh, fossil fuels. Okay. So, but, okay, I just had one more little point, and that is it's obvious that um, the... Uh, th that the power corporations that use fossil fuels have been using the atmosphere, and the water system, and the earth. Uh, uh, there's an awful lot of background noise. Um, <coughs> they've been using the atmosphere and the water system and the earth as a dumping grounds. And, uh, you know, I live right by Lake Michigan and I see people dumping crap into the lake and I feel sorry for them because I look at Lake Michigan and it's a great comfort to me and I love it. And other people see it as a toilet. And that's really, really a shame. So, uh, and it's not just nuclear power plants, it's fossil fuels and other kinds of industries that just dump, dump their pollution all over the place because they don't have to take care of it. It's like building a, it's like building a hotel with beautiful rooms, 
and not putting in any bathrooms or toilets. Okay, so, Alexa, you're on. You're you're up next since you haven't spoken yet. So you go right ahead, please. Hi. Um. All right. Can you anyway, stop, Alexa, if you don't mind on the video, if you could. <laughs> um. No, no, thank you. Not right now. I, I swear I am who I say I am. Oh, I know. You've probably seen me before. Um, yes, we know. All right, go ahead. Yeah, um, anyway, so I think people have neglected to point out that, so first of all, I guess I, I had to leave for a bit, but I remember Ernie was talking about how um, Paul Vallis was receiving money from some uh, pack he didn't like from like Ken Griffin or something. Um, but the thing is, though, that, like, 83% of funding for Paul Vallis comes from individuals, not groups, not unions. To contrast this, 94% um, of Brandon Johnson's funding is coming from uh, public sector unions, almost none from individuals. You know, it's funny because, like, I remember... I mean, this dude kind of just came out of nowhere, I felt like, with the race. You know, it was all about... Vallis was in the lead, and then it was between um, Chewy Garcia and Lori Lightfoot for the second for second place. And then this Brandon Johnson dude just, like, shows up. I'd never... I, I, I barely heard of the dude before um, runoff. Um, and anyway, the reason these teachers' unions, all these public sector unions, including teachers' unions, are backing... Brandon Johnson is because, well, what happens when you completely bankroll someone's campaign is that you become their puppet. And Brandon Johnson is a union puppet. Yep. Um, he's, yeah, he's supported by the Chicago Working Families Union, who are just shady people who want to abolish the police. He's kind of, you know, walked that back and forth. I don't know what he actually feels because he's a politician. Yep. Um, he, he's supported by the Chicago Teachers Union because Paul Vallis likes things like school choice, charter schools, magnet schools. See, I, I grew up in a, like a poor area, um, and I actually was able to get into a magnet school for high school, and now I have a master's from Johns Hopkins. So I am living proof of how magnet schools are able to give children who otherwise couldn't have opportunities opportunities. Um, yeah, so the Chicago Teacher Union hates those things and hates Paul Vallis because he, you know, wants to give students other options. And Chicago Teachers Union, quite frankly, wants to hold kids hostage, um, you know, so they can get, you know, more money and all this stuff and more pension benefits, despite the fact that an overwhelming, like, well over a quarter of Illinois taxes go to public sector pensions. Also, you know, worth noting is that the Chicago public schools have this really bad thing of, um, I mean, even disregarding like all of the, uh, all of the horrible test scores, the you know, plummeting and stuff, which, yeah, disproportionately affect, um, negatively affect, um, people of color. Um, they had a record number of teacher on student sexual assaults um 772 of those in the 2021 to 2022 school year and i think most of that a lot of that time i don't even think most teachers were like at school because they were trying to you know say that that freaking um that they were doing whatever they could to avoid you know in-person thing to, learning despite the fact that they got to cut in line people who were like senior citizens with medical conditions to get the vaccine so that they could go back to school only for them to say, no, I don't want to go to school, even though it was, you know, known in like late 2021 that <laughs> the children weren't getting or spreading COVID. Um, and yeah, the, the idea that Brandon Johnson is going to, you know, support the people and the taxpayers and really anyone besides the unions that bankrolled him is ridiculous, and he is going to just, you know, again, allow children to be, to get horrible educations, no futures, and be sexually assaulted by teachers, um, because, 
you know, they want to have their monopoly on education. And he's he's okay with that. So, yeah, that's my that's my spiel. At least Paul Vallis is not President perfect. Biden. President right. Biden is oh, supposed to no, no. so Raj, Raj, we got this. Andy's going to okay. be our last person talking tonight because we're starting to run out of time. But we'll keep okay. this call open. All right. So go Hi. ahead, Andy. Hello. Hello. Jay, Jay, you've, been on, you've been on a couple yeah. of times. We're gonna. We're gonna we're gonna shut down our rebuttal period and close out the college after Andy's done. We're running a little okay. out of time here, so uh, and just okay. had a lot of chance to comment. So Andy, you go. The floor is now yours. Okay, I'd like to uh, make a follow-up point uh, to what Jan said, <clears throat> and many other people had the idea of nuclear power. Um, one main fact that is taught to school children now is that 10,000 times more light falls on the planet every day than what the human race uses. We collect one ten thousandth of the solar intake and store it in tanks or batteries or whatever, and you can run the whole human race with no coal, no oil, no gas, and no nukes. The technology to do that is available today. And that unlimited source of energy comes from a giant fusion reactor with no safety problems. That's the one out there we call the sun. It, it absolutely dwarfs anything we could build on Earth here. Second point, America has been talking about socialism and welfare and capitalism. Well, America, as it stands today, has the two largest socialist welfare programs on the planet. One of those programs is called the U.S. Military. Oh. And the other program is called Welfare for Billionaires. You right. shovel money to billionaires in amounts that they could never spend in a whole lifetime, and they don't pay but 3% taxes on it. And when everybody's complaining about politicians asking, how are you going to pay for this? I didn't hear one person I was talking about, how about going back to making the pay, rich pay their fair share over a certain amount, like coming out of Eisenhower's years, the tax on the top rate, once you got filthy rich, they started taxing it at 91%. And we had a growing middle class from 1945 all the way up until 1973, when the Supreme Court and Lewis Powell, uh, they started taxing the court uh, with right-wing politicians. But that's for another night. Uh, Everybody's talking about how bad socialism is. I think a lot of people don't even know what socialism is or, is or means. There's some, some issues. If you don't tell people what the issue is, what politician it comes from, Democrat, Republican, Independent, Progressive, if you don't tell people, if you just take a survey, 80% of America agrees with we want affordable, good education. We want affordable health care like we had in the 50s when a lot of us were growing up. We want good roads, good schools, we want clean water. Um, these are all things, believe it or not, that Bernie Sanders has fought for his whole life. <clears throat> but if you tell people the ideas are coming from Bernie, oh, Bernie's bad, Bernie's bad. But you ask, do you think it's wrong to let a child die because the parents can't afford 50,000 a month in treatment. Well, nobody wants to see children die needlessly unless they're right-wing Republicans right now. So it's time to uh, take a reality check. <clears throat> Professor Griffin wrote 14 books on the forensic evidence of 9 11 but yet we still have the American press promoting the idea that it was some kind of Muslim attack when in reality, seven buildings were destroyed in America by some demolition crew. Four were leveled completely, the other three were left as half standing rubble to be taken down by trucks and cranes in a day or two. So, if, if last thing I'll say, um, that book by Mark C. Jacobson about the environment it sounds like a good one. I'm going to track that down. I just got this from the life of, from Barnes and Noble. It's called the New Climate War. It's a summary of what's going on all over the world. 
by Michael E. Mann. Uh, and he's a highly, highly credible environmental scientist who's been writing about climate change for the last 15, 20 years or so. And uh, the, the evidence is just getting more and more solid that we have to do something about climate change. That's a universal issue. If you ask people in states that have been flooded out, uh, should should we get help from the government? Should they do something about this? Or uh, should we maybe make the levy strong? <coughs> Political opinion. <coughs> people don't want to see their houses flooded. People don't want to see dioxin contamination for hundreds of square miles like what they're facing in Iowa and Pennsylvania. And, oh, uh, one final point. It was known back in the late 60s when they thought a fully operating nuclear power industry with 1,600 reactors would give us one Chernobyl per year on American soil. The original planners of nuclear power in America thought that the base, best safety record they could hope for would be one Chernobyl per year in exchange for cheap electricity for the rest of the public. So that's why a whole bunch of nuclear scientists that Jan has been reading about for 30 years and I've got been reading about for 40 years, John Goffman, Arthur Campbell, Henry Lovitz, a whole bunch of people that know about nuclear power went on the campaign trail in 1970 and nipped it in the butt. We got less than 10% of the reactors running in this country because of what they, they had planned on because the public thought uh, a few thousand dead in one blast a year for cheap electricity is not an acceptable social price. We have to look for something more safer. And now, if you haven't been following the news in the last month, reports are coming in from all over the world, from different companies, corporations, solar and wind power is cheaper than fossil fuel all over the world and way cheaper than any kind of nuclear power plant that currently exists or is can be built in the foreseeable future in time to do anything about climate change. So the future belongs to renewables, high efficiency, Solar, wind, battery backup. And for those of you that are capitalists that want to invest in the stock market, do a Google search for something called SWAP, S W A B. There's a guy named, uh, last name was Tillman, I think, or something. He's telling this is the best, best rate investment, uh, by getting on the ground floor of Amazon or Google before the stock price is shot through the roof. It's called SWAP, S W A B. And uh, they're hawking it as an investment for Wall Street people. They want to make a killing. It means swab means solar, wind, and battery. Big batteries are coming into existence now at the utility scale. So that gives uh, cities 24 hour uninterrupted state of power from solar and wind. That's happening right now, not five or 10 years in the future. So if anybody wants any information on that, uh, make up your notes and uh, I'll, I'll be more than happy to answer more questions next week. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, next week, Nuquatch is going to be here. Okay, Jonathan, make it quick because we got to get out of here. Nuquatch. Nuquatch. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly mention a lot of these uh, uh, other countries that we admire for their partnership between what is commonly referred to as democratic socialism and competitive democracy-based capitalism have what's known as the parliamentary system as opposed to the winner-takes-all two-party system, which- it The what, 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 what? Parliamentary system of government as opposed to winner-takes-all two-party system. So there's more proportional representation for ideas. There's more proportional representation for budgets and it just, uh, engages the public in civic engagement in a far more, we all yeah, 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 can get a piece of the pie way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Proportional time, representation. Uh, a par parliamentary system is the most commonly adopted system when countries around the world start completely from scratch new. I believe there was a Caribbean country within the last 12 months that started a whole new uh, system of governance, and they did not choose the American winner-takes-all two-party system. They chose parliamentary system because it is more uh, cultivating a proportional representation. I just like to say that uh, I know, once again, I'm hoping for uh, God to come down from the sky during halftime at the Super Bowl and to suggest something really awesome, but it's still worth noting 
Uh, winner takes all two party system is not the only way of deciding these big ticket items on planet Earth. Uh, yeah, how, how, how are you going to change it? The, the two party system is here to stay. The, re the reason we've got a two party system, the founding fathers wanted to get away from the parliamentary system. Okay. Yeah. So we have a totally different system. If you're talking, if you're talking, if you're talking, hello, if you're talking, if you're talking about, if you're talking about, if you're talking about proportional representation, if you remember, if you remember historically, that's how Adolf Hitler got elected the first time yeah. around. Because All right. he got it. Well, Hitler, the, the National Socialist Party won only 28% of the vote, but they got the highest, highest plurality, so they won the election. It was in 1933. By yeah. by 1937, when Hitler came up for re-election, he just abolished the rest of the party, so he was the only thing on the ballot. All right, but at this point, I'm gonna dog. I'm gonna call the College of Complexes adjourned. Charlie, I'm gonna give you the host control so you can keep the uh, the thing going after this. So uh, I'll see you guys next week. Charlie, you got the host. You can keep the Zoom going. And with that. I'm going to leave and wish everybody a good afternoon and a good evening. Hello? I need to quit recording, too. Okay. Right. I, I just, just, just a comment, too. Uh, um, uh, the reason, the, the reason um, Paul Vallis got a, got a big subsidy from um, uh, Ken Griffin is because Ken Griffin left Chicago. He went down to Florida. The reason being that his his employees uh, were were uh, in, the, 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 his employees were affected by the crime problem. That's why he left Chicago. So that's why hey, he's giving money to Dallas. Hey Charlie, will you stop recording? What I I I. Didn't.